Hey guys, today we're going over a firewall for Pop! OS. You can also use this on any other Linux distribution. But I'm continuing along the line of the Pop! OS series. We started with the installation and checking checksums. Now we're looking into some firewall options. There is a popular firewall out there called Little Snitch. We're not going to be looking at that today. That's for Mac OS. This is open snitch. It's an open source version and we're going to notice pop-ups from time to time. We can control every single process on our computer. As you see right there, I have it installed and it's asking if I would like to let Firefox web browser browse the web. What I'm going to do is I can select how long I want to allow it to connect to the server and I'm going to go ahead and select 30 seconds. And when I do that, it's going to save it in our open snitch management GUI or graphical user interface. We'll have full control of the entire system and every IP address and what the different applications are that need to connect to the internet. As you can tell, it needs to know network manager. That's our internet. So of course I want to allow that to connect to the internet. I'm going to go ahead and make that forever because I trust network manager. So we'll go ahead and hit allow and what it's going to do is it's going to create these rules. Of course I only allowed Firefox to connect to that domain for 30 seconds. So we may see another pop-up for that. I wanted to use that as an example and if you trust the website or the IP address I do suggest allowing forever if you want to continue allowing it. And you can change these rules anytime in the future and you can actually stop Open Snitch anytime you want by hitting this pause button here, disables it, then you can hit running again. Oh, there it goes again. What I'm going to say is let me look up this IP address and I will allow it for just the next five minutes until I can look up this IP address. So we'll write down the IP address dot eight two dot one one three dot three. Now I know and I'm gonna allow it for the next 30 seconds until I can look up what I'm allowing. That way in the future I can change it to deny that IP address a connection and as you can see Firefox is trying to connect to yet another one so let's put that IP address in too. This is 185.199.111.154. And all we have to do is do a quick Google search and we can figure out if we trust these IP addresses and Firefox connecting to them. So we'll go ahead and hit allow. It's going to allow it for the next, of course, I do trust Tor. It's in the right location, slash user, slash bin, slash Tor. Now, if you don't know the application and you're not sure, let's say I didn't know what Tor was, I would just go what is Tor? And it tells you what it is. It's a second generation Onion router. We can go ahead and hit Man Tor to read more about it. It'll tell you about its usage options and what it is. So we have it allowing Tor for 30 seconds. It's going to end up popping up again. We're going to allow it permanently on that next pop up. If you have any questions on this, make sure to leave a comment below. Um, I'm going to help walk everyone through this process in the comment section. So if you have trouble, you don't understand what I'm talking about, just go ahead and leave a comment. I'll be happy to try and help you with that. I'm also going to write out in the blog how to install OpenSnitch, an open source version of Little Snitch, very popular firewall for Mac OS. On the blog at buymeacoffee.com slash politictech, you'll be able to read the public posts there. Now this is my DNS server. I recognize this. It's nextdns.io. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change it to forever and I'm going to hit allow then. And that way I won't be bugged by that pop-up message ever again. And it knows to allow the connection. Now if there's something I don't trust, I will hit deny on that pop-up. And at that point I can deny it temporarily. Say I need to do something for a short period of time. I could then hit allow for five minutes and then I'd be able to utilize that connection or application for the next five minutes. This gives you a full level of control over your Linux system so you can have every application, every connection for each application fully under your control. You can, can deny it for short periods of time, you can deny it until the next reboot, you can deny it for the next five minutes if you need to utilize it short 
temporary periods of time, and it gives you an overall sense of control for all your applications and outgoing connection. This is a great option for you. Do you suggest checking out my blog because I'm going to show you how to install it there on Pop! OS and Debian systems. And uh, it's pretty much the same for Red Hat based systems, which you'll just use the RPM command, but the same flag. So keep an eye out for that if you want to learn to install this on your Pop! OS system. You can download it here over at Oh, let's go ahead and this is asking once again so we're gonna hit forever it's gonna connect on port 443 this time for next DNS I'm gonna go to allow and it won't ask me again so there's an example of it I could also show you a command say I want to run uh, one one common thing is backdoors may utilize something called netcat it's called the swiss army tcp ip knife so we'll go ahead and hit that and watch we'll get a pop up in just a second as i hit enter okay we see it's asking do we want to allow it to connect we're going to hit deny and we have it on deny already we can hit deny and at that point it'll deny for that period of time now we may want to hit deny forever and we can also look at our rules here here's the one we just hit for deny let's take a look at what we applied here the pop-up shows it allows it only for 30 seconds let's change it to forever let's deny that we deny it forever we hit save and we hit close and now it is on a permanent ban for that particular thing here is the open snitch log file slash var slash log slash open snitch d dot log we're gonna hit deny and we will hit deny now what we're gonna do next we're going to look up some of those IP addresses and see what Firefox was trying to connect to. That way, when we get that uh, that pop-up once again, we can simply understand if we want to block it or not. So let's go ahead and copy and paste one of those IP addresses. Let's see what it was that it was trying to connect to. And we will do that. Okay, we know what this is. Of course, it's DNS again, so each time it'll be slightly different IP address port number this time the destination port is 53 the destination IP is 88.4.4 .4. and if you don't understand what you're seeing simply look it up I'm gonna hit allow because I trust next DNS that's my DNS server on it so we'll go ahead and there is yet another I do have the snowflake uh, extension installed so this is helping Tor users connect to the Tor network it's this snowflake right up here and I do trust that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna allow that forever for that particular connection okay and what are we gonna do here we can simply write down this IP address add it to our list of IP addresses that we want to look up we want to investigate so we know if we want to block it forever or temporarily you can hit allow temporarily for 30 seconds and we'll hit allow then what we can do is simply look up that IP address and see what it belongs to and of course we will hit allow for about five minutes this time just so I can have a chance to look up There's going to be a lot of pop-ups because Firefox is always connecting to all these different websites. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out a lot of these windows because, of course, it's going to create more pop-ups. So what I'll do is I'll do allow. And I can change those rules anytime I want. and you will be surprised how often Firefox connects to different domains this includes advertising trackers you'll be able to uh, fully manage all of that and what what will happen is you're gonna have a much finer amount of control over each application and internet connection and this is why I do suggest checking out open snitch and of course on my blog I'll be showing you how to install it right here we're just going over what it is how it is and what it works and what we're doing here is we're gonna have to individually block or allow each IP address 
and we're going to research those IP addresses and that way we know exactly what it is. So I'm going to allow this because that's an I, uh, SSH connection I have open and I want to, of course I want to maintain that. And now what we're looking at, what is this? Oh, this is Google. Now what is this IP address for? Well, we'll have to continue reading and see if we want to block that forever or not. And what happens is you can actually deny something and then you can check if it works and when you hit deny then see if it's interfering with any of your internet activities and if it is you can then open the GUI again take a look at all your denies and see the one we just hit is this one here and we can actually edit that by using this button right here we can actually change that to allow as we see here so deny forever allow and then when we want to do that we'll hit apply to change the rules depending on what it is that we're looking at we have our list of rules here you can see the different denies this one's for 30 seconds I can go ahead and change that as well you can go through each one individually check all your hosts that you're connecting to or is trying to connect and you can go in and block each one individually if you want to create a rule for that uh, you can change it you can see what the current rule is and then you can go change it from allow to deny of course I trust pop OS so I'm going to hit apply to allow you won't have to go through a lot of this it's a lot of process of elimination a lot of Google searching for what the applications are you can also use the what is command in your terminal where you can simply say you know what is Avahi and then it tells you it's the DNS SDM DNS daemon so it's part of our Linux system we can then go to man Avahi daemon to learn more about it and it'll tell us what exactly it is and we can go back to our last tutorial where we simply use the rdeb sums command on pop os or debian related operating systems and then we can go to Avahi and see if that comes up and what it'll do is it'll check it out for us and make sure it matches the checksums from the official package manager so we can utilize some of the previous tutorials combining that with our current open snitch tutorial checking our integrity for these files that we may not be too sure of and that way we can improve our security at multiple layers from the integrity of the installed applications and files and if they match the original software that way we can tell if some malicious individual or program may have manipulated or modified any of those packages and we can also block and allow connections from the process layer from the Unix sockets layer and we have a lot greater and tighter control over our system using open snitch so it's a great software firewall for you to check out I wanted to do this for a supporter who was asking for tips this is a great place to start at I like to introduce free open source software that everyone can take advantage of without having to pay any money leave a comment below if you have any questions and I will be putting more screenshots and information over on the blog at buymeacoffee.com slash politictech slash posts. So be sure to check us out there and I will be back later with more on how to protect your privacy.